What's going on, everyone? It's Adam and Craig with Grand Sand Golf. In this show, we're doing our tournament preview for the WGC Workday Championship at the concession. That is a mouthful, so I'm just going to call it WGC from here on out. But Craig, we move on from California and we're heading east to Florida. Yeah, uh, you know, normally, or at least in the past few years, this has been held in Mexico, uh, but it makes its return. You know, long time for a long time, this this tournament had been held in Florida. So, you know, maybe yeah. a, a little bit of a, a homecoming for it. Um, it I think it kind of sucks not to have it in Mexico, but I mean, you got to sure. make do. Yeah. From what I know, this is only a one-year move. They had to get a temporary move for COVID-19, but... Looking at the previous winners for Mexico, we had Patrick Reed. It's all uh, winners that have won multiple times. Patrick Reed, Dustin Johnson, Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson again. So Mm -hmm. they ate up that uh, course in Mexico. But brand new course. Uh, Who are we going to see this year? It's a 72-stroke play event. 72-player field as well. Top 50 in the world. And then kind of a smattering from other tours. Asian Tour, Japan Tour, Australasian, Sunset Tour. Two from each of those. Yeah. Um, and I think, I don't know, so 72-player field, uh, that was before. We've just had Max Homa win, uh, yeah, that's spoiler an alert, uh, he just won <laughs> um, yeah. the Genesis Invitational. So I don't know if he bumped someone. I, they were saying on the broadcast that if he wins, he gets in next week. So um, I think he's just added. So it might be 73. I don't think anyone gets bumped, but don't hold me to that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll figure that out. Uh, it's a 72 hole stroke event. You did say 72 stroke event. I don't think anyone's going to be playing it in 72 strokes, but you know, we'll see. We don't know till we don't know till they tee off. That's exactly right. And obviously no cut with a limited field, but it's a brand new event so, or brand new course. I should say yeah. it's at the concession golf club. Uh, I believe it's Braderton, Florida. I think just outside Tampa Bay opened in 2006. Relatively new course. Bra- Bradenton, I think. Bradenton. Um, named obviously for the famous moment in the 1969 Ryder Cup with Jack Nicholas. I can link that video there. Uh, it's going to be kind of new for a lot of golf fans. Par 72, 7,400 yards. Craig, what do you know of the concession? Like, wh- what have you read? What have you seen? So very little. Uh, I've just the only thing I've really been able to dig up are, are previews of the twenty fifth of the course for the twenty fifteen NCAA Championships. Yep. Um, it sounds, you know, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. So a lot oh, of yeah. these courses, uh, you know, this is. Uh, I guess I don't know where this is. It, it, I mean, it's just south of Tampa Bay, um, but a lot of the courses in that area obviously are, ha- are lined with houses because mm-hmm. it's ideal real estate. You know, f- the way that a lot of these places make money is is from the real estate value yeah. they create. Um, but this one, y- you don't have that. You have you have actual uh, you know tree lined holes and and it it looks more like you're playing in in the bush in Florida, which is cool. Yeah, really cool. Um, greens so it looks like for the most part i mean bermuda grass is uh mm-hmm. it doesn't look like the rough is long but it's going to be that thatchy similar to what we saw at um riviera i think this week obviously it's a different grass but uh, but right. similar type of thing it's that thatchy or lower grass uh, it, it seems like these greens are, are complex and they they do a good job uh, you know lots of undulations Maybe almost link style. Um, I, I maybe not. I shouldn't say that because I don't think you really want to play on the ground sure. like you do yeah. with links golf. Yeah. Um, but really, like there's there you can be uh, have to carry it to spots on the green, and if you don't, the slopes can take you off, and and you might yeah. still be on the green, but you're out of position. So what I've read is hard highest slope rating in all the courses in Greater Greater Tampa Bay. Um, so it's a really hard course, and I think the par fives play is some of the hardest par fives. Um, maybe that we'll see kind of all year long on tour, but um, well, we know, yeah, as you said, the 2015 NCAA championship won by Bryson DeChambeau, kind of a little bit of a different pl- Bryson than we know now. So I don't know how yeah. much that translates. Maybe 80, to 80 pounds ago. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Some other names in that um, Thomas Dietrich actually was in that NCAA individual um, event as well. So I think he's making the start here. Hmm. A little bit of a maybe a, a sneak peek of picks. I don't know. We'll I see. don't know. Maybe. Let's see who has Craig. Let's talk about so, it. So so you know normally we're looking at course histories here, uh, but we got the wrong course. We'll call it wrong course right history this week. Um, so looking just at, at what people have done at the you know the WCG 
WGC Championship. Sure. Yeah. Um, so DJ, you know, like I said last week, DJ, you can basically put him at the top of this list every week. Uh, he's one. got <laughs> three wins, six top tens. Uh, yeah, the guy just has played really good. It doesn't matter what the field. You get these strong fields for WGCs. DJ still comes out yeah. on top a lot of the time. Um, I put Rory in at number two. Now, you, people might argue that Patrick Reed should be up there. Uh, I've got Rory. Rory's got eight top tens in the last nine starts in this tournament. Uh, I think you were also telling me that uh, for Rory, if he were to win this, this would be him completing the WGC slam. So yes, this is the right, only one right. he has not won. Yeah. Uh, now, Patrick Reed, he's the person that you might might want to argue he deserves to be above uh, Rory. He has two wins, but... He has no other top tens. There, you know, oh, the rest of his yeah, the rest of okay. his history at this event. Uh, I mean, it's sort of typical Patrick Reed. Either he either wins it or, or he's yeah. you know some are some are not <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah. um, next up, I got JT four straight top tens. Uh, has not yet won, but uh, you know I would not be surprised if he can find some form. Obviously, uh, sure. he can win any week. And then Terrell Hatton's last one. He started four times in this event. Uh, three top 10s and one, I think it's a, a top 20 still. So every time he's showed up at this event, he's done pretty well. And Haddon's probably the most interesting on that list because we haven't seen him in the U.S. for a while. So playing well in Europe, but or I guess in the Middle East. So yeah, interesting yeah. to see how that comes across. It well, will be interesting. Looking at who's coming in hot. And again, this is my list. This isn't based on some metrics. I, I'm making it up. So you can argue this as much as you want in the comments. But I think the best form coming in is Tony Finau. He takes the first spot from DJ with his Sunday um, at Riviera. He has three straight second place finishes, four straight top fives. I think he's just playing incredible golf. A win must be on the horizon. So I think Tony Finau might be the best hottest golfer on the planet right now. Yeah, I was making an argument for him, uh, you know, for our picks last week. Uh, him, Cantley, and Xander, I said all those guys were coming in good. He's the only one that really kept that form through this week. I, Dustin Johnson's still there. So he still has three wins in his last nine tournaments, top 11s in his past 10 tournaments. It's, it's Dustin Johnson. It didn't look the best. I guess his win in Saudi wasn't the best putting. His Sunday at Riviera wasn't the best, but it's still Dustin Johnson. Mm -hmm. He gets second. And this is a little bit fun. So we have all these different um, tours coming over. So a couple interesting names here. Daniel Von Tonder is third, and he has four wins in his last nine events. All on the Sunshine Tour. I mean, we remember a couple that kind of South African swing. We talked about him a little bit, but he really dominated the last half of 2020 there. Can that translate? I don't know. Yeah, he'll be a little bit more of your sleeper hot form coming in. Yeah. And then Brad Kennedy, 46 year old Australian, has won two of his last five starts on the Australasian Tour and four top threes in his last seven events. So interesting to see these kind of different tour guys come in hot, but. Maybe a couple names to keep keep your eye on. Yeah. I, I hadn't last... had my eye on him, so that's a good one to bring up. <laughs> the last one's Bobby Mack, a guy we talk about all the time when we talk about the European Tour. Since his win in November, he moved from 91st in the world to 44th. He's just making a big, big surge late in 2020, early in 21. His last eight starts have all been top 30s or better, including four top sixes. So... Only that one win in, at the Aphrodite Showdown, I believe it was. Um, but since then, he's just been right at the top of the leaderboards on the European Tour. Yeah, we've been talking about him a lot. Uh, and maybe that's a good chance to remind everyone, if you're playing the European Tour Fantasy, this is a European Tour event. So make sure you got your picks in um, because it will yeah. count for points. Yeah, good point. Okay, so, you know, we do not have... Um, Typically, we incorporate a course fit into the, the Grandstand Golf model, um, but we don't have that. And again, I should qualify, this is based on, uh, this is not using this week's stats. Right, so so this is based yeah. on stats coming into this this week at Riviera. Yeah. Um, but the, the model like Xander, uh, same reason I've liked Xander every week for the past uh, six months, it <laughs> seems like. Um, JT, obviously, we saw him miss a cut first time in a while. Uh, yep. So we'll see whether he falls down a bit once those stats are in. Same thing with Bryson. Um, Rom, he actually did a pretty good job of uh, of moving up the leaderboard, doing that classic... He did, uh, yeah. Classic... Um, 
you know, top, top five player, player in the world, the world. <laughs> just <laughs> working his way up the leaderboard over the course of the weekend. Yeah. Uh, DJ, you know, uh, obviously he's been playing well and he moved a little bit the wrong way on Sunday, but still a top 10. So I, I don't expect him to be moving down. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, all the guys you'd expect. Uh, it, it, a little bit different this week because we don't really have uh, a too much of a course fit going into this. So it's going to be a little bit more bland and a little bit more just, the, yeah, the top guys, the top guys. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. So looking at the field, picking one person as the most interesting man in the field, I, I was looking, I was trying to cherry pick someone else, but ultimately I ended back on Bryson DeChambeau. He won the 2015 NCAA uh, Individual Championship at this course. So in terms of course history, he really has it all when it comes. I did m mention Thomas Dietrich with that T3 in 2015, but Bryson, it, he's always going to be talked about. He, he always commands the attention. In Here, the past this, for instance, we're talking about him right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has two wins, including the U.S. Open, nine top tens. But maybe for the first time since the U.S. Open, this is his his worst form, you know, missing the cut at Riviera. So it, I don't know. I don't think he'll be slept on at all, but an interesting guy to watch every week, but especially this week. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I called it last week, so I don't know why where everyone else was, but yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I don't think Bryson's the kind of guy who's going to be out of form for long. So no. uh, I definitely think he's going to bounce. I mean, you saw it, it's widely hyped how he was on the range till midnight on on what was yeah. that Thursday night getting his getting his <laughs> yeah. work in, and and he did look good on Friday. So um, yeah. I expect him to be a good bounce back candidate. So he will be interesting to watch this week for sure. And finally, the last thing we'd like to look at, the way, way, way too early weather forecast. We kind of missed the way, way, way too early weather forecast kind of missed the wind at Riviera this week. So mm -hmm. it, it again looks pretty good. You know, highs in the in the high 70s, sunny. But that second to last column, in the last column, there are some winds, potentially some gusts. So keep an eye out. The wind might play a factor again this week. Yeah, join us on Wednesday too. We'll go through things. If if the forecast has changed, we'll definitely talk about that then. So um, it's way too early, but it looks like it should be a good week. Fairly fairly classic Florida swing golf week. Yeah, exactly. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, make sure to like, uh, subscribe to our channel if you like our content. Um, yeah, good luck and uh, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, we've got the other shows coming out. Picks show tomorrow, sleeper show tomorrow, um, and uh, as always, we'll go through the whole field on Wednesday. So good luck this week. We'll see you guys. This next video. <laughs> See ya.